this is a test of a uh, previous PowerPoint that I've done in class. Uh, I would like you to let me know if you have any problems uh, viewing this on your computer or if you have dial-up in particular, uh, what sort of problems do you have in viewing this particular uh, presentation. Anyhow, this is the manual processing presentation I did last week. And uh, we're going to start off by talking about hand tanks. Now, hand tanks, uh, while we don't use this technology anymore in x-ray departments, it is relevant still to the automatic processor because many of the technologies, ideas, and other sorts of things that go into hand tanks are, are incorporated in an automatic processor. Now, to begin with, we're going to spray some water into this tank and fill it up. And you'll notice the water rises until it reaches a certain level. Now, what we've got down below here is a water inlet, and it's spraying in under high pressure. And then at the top, we've got the drain. Now, the drain allows the tank to fill to a certain level and then overflow out the top of the tank. Uh, this works much like the overflow on a bathtub would work. Now, over to the uh, uh, surrounding the tank, we have what's called the master tank. And this is a large, heavy-duty stainless steel tank, usually well insulated. And it allows the uh, other tanks to uh, all share a similar environment and keeps them all at, at, at relatively the same temperature. Now, on the left, you're going to see the developer insert. Uh, this is a smaller stainless steel tank, usually five gallons in size, and it's going to hold the developer chemical. And on the right, you'll see the fixer insert, and again, it does basically the same thing the developer insert does. So we've got two smaller tanks inside of our master. Now, let's move the uh, master tank over to the right just a little bit, and we'll bring in a piece of x-ray film right now loaded inside of a cassette. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our dark room, turn off our lights, bring up our safe light, and unload the cassette. And you'll notice the cassette just disappeared, and now I have a piece of plain x-ray film. Uh, we're going to take that piece of x-ray film and we're going to move it over into the developer and watch the film over on the left. You'll notice that it, it does uh, bring out the blacks. Uh, the whites are not white yet. They're sort of a, a dark greenish color. And what has happened is that the developer has taken any of the silver grains that have a uh, latent image and it has basically turned them black. Any silver grains which don't have latent image, it left them alone. And they are still silver bromide, which is that sort of greenish uh, blue color uh, that one sees on a piece of x-ray film. Now, we're going to leave the film in the developer for five minutes. Uh, developer temperature is 68 degrees. Now, we're going to move the film from the developer over into the fixer. Now, as soon as the film reaches the fixer, you can turn off the safe light. Everything from this point on can be done under standard white lights. Okay, we're going to leave the film in the fixer for five minutes. Now, one of the big changes you'll notice if you look at the film over on the left is that the greenish areas turn sort of a light bluish color. Now, what happened is that the fixer's first action uh, was to stop the development. And what it does is uh, the developer is a alkaline chemical and it simply counteracts the action of the developer and stops all developing action. Now the other thing that it does is it removes the silver bromide and the way it does this is there's a chemical in the fixer called sodium theosulfate and it just so happens that in a sodium theosulfate solution silver bromide is soluble and dissolves into solution. So we simply dissolved it out of the emulsion. Now we're going to leave the film in the developer for about 10 minutes and, or I'm sorry, in the fixer for about 10 minutes and then we're going to take it out and we're going to move it into the center section of our processing area and we're going to wash the film for about 30 minutes. Now washing the film for 30 minutes is crucial. Uh, you have to remove all of the chemicals from the emulsion that were in there if you don't do that, the emulsion over time will turn brown and look ugly. And that simply degrades the image over time. So minimum 30 minutes to wash the film. 
Now, when the film is thoroughly washed and, and all the chemicals are removed, we're going to pull the film out of the tank and we're going to dry and it says A-L-I-T and that is as long as it takes. And the reason I'm saying that is some places will drip dry films, simply let them dry like you'd let clothes dry on a, on a line, or you may see certain uh, places uh, having spe some special drying cabinet which blows hot air over the film, much like a hair dryer works, and it dries it much quicker, maybe in 10 or 20 minutes. Okay, let, let's review the uh, steps of uh, processing. First step is development. Again, it's at 5 minutes to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I don't care if you know these numbers or not. We're not doing any hand processing. I just threw them into the uh, discussion for completeness value. Now, again, the important thing you need to know is what developer does. And it takes silver bromide, converts it to silver. That is the primary and the most important function of the developer. Now, when we look at fixing, uh, again, 10 minutes, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't care if you know those numbers, but the important thing is that the fixer stops the developer. It is going to remove silver bromide from the film, and last but not least, it's the first step in achieving what's called archival quality. Now, when we talk about archival quality, what I'm specifically looking at here is the ability of the film to retain the image over a long period of time. And it's the, the term of an archive, and an archive is, again, an area where we maintain data over a long period of time. Okay, let's look at the last steps of our development process, now, or processing, rather. Uh, first thing we're going to do is wash the film here. Uh, again, 30 minutes, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, I don't care about those numbers. Uh, again, washing is going to remove any chemical residues, and again, it's going to, it's there to make sure the film doesn't stain over time, and again, washing is going to achieve or is going to contribute to our archival quality in our film. Last but not least, we're going to dry our film. Again, as long as it takes to dry the film, the film has to be completely dry before it gets stored. If you store a damp film uh, adjacent to another piece of film, the two pieces of film will literally weld themselves together. You'll never get them apart. Okay, we're going to harden the emulsion, uh, make sure that it uh, isn't scratched easily, and uh, you're going to find out that dry films, again, can be stored, and the term for storing them over a long period of time is storing them in an archive. And that will end the sound slide presentation. Thank you.